Welcome back to Knowledge is Kings, guys. I am Kings, and today we are going to be building a lectern, the one I'm actually standing at right now. But you're not going to get to see it until we build it. Let's get to it. So the first thing of this project, we're going to want to lay out all the pieces onto a sheet of plywood. And you can see I have it all laid out and labeled, each individual one. And as I laid them out, I made sure to leave a quarter inch gap between each of the pieces. Because if I didn't, if I just had one line and no gap separating, I would end up losing material once I ran my saw blade through it. So I used a clamp-on straight edge to uh, make my cuts and I, I tried to line the pieces as best I could in one line. Uh, that way I could just make one straight across the whole plywood piece a couple of times and then cut out the individual pieces from there. So after we get all the pieces cut, we're going to want to start assembling the carcass first. Uh, so you're going to need the carcass front side one and side two uh, and now if you check in the description you will find all the pieces measurements and labels and i'll just be referring to those labels as we go so you're going to start off with those first three pieces and assemble the carcass and make sure to glue and screw everything together now i am nailing it to begin with just to kind of hold my pieces and then I come back and screw them together. After those uh, three are all screwed together, we're gonna take the three shelf pieces and assemble those. One is gonna go flush with the top, one will go in the middle, and then we'll, one will come up from the bottom uh, three and a half inches. So the piece that's flush is gonna be the top, and the one that is up from the bottom will then be the bottom. So what we're gonna do after we get the shelves installed we are going to turn it over and install the bottom which i have labeled as the base so this is going to be the base and then once the base is screwed on there we're going to add four wheels now i'm holding my uh, speed square there to just make sure that the wheels don't go past the edge because we're going to be putting a frame around it and i don't want the wheels to hit the frame once those are set in enough we're just going to screw them on then we're going to be working on the top assembly and so I took this two side pieces of the top that are angled and I'm going to pre-drill some holes here and then screw them together. That way all the cuts I make on them are exactly the same. So once we have the top sides cut, we are going to start the assembly on the top. For that we're going to need the top base, the two top sides, and the top front. Once we have those assembled, then we're going to add the top back. The next thing we need to do is take an angle gauge, and I'm using an electronic one here just for accuracy, and find the angle between that top part and the angled part. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the top top front piece and cut a bevel on it. So I'm using the table saw for that, and I'll just use my angle gauge here again to set the blade to the right angle. So once I rip that angle down, then I'm just going to glue it and screw it onto the front. And you'll notice that there was kind of a bow to it. I am going to get that out as I screw it together. So I'll screw both sides and then press down in the middle and get that bow and make the board perfectly straight again. Once the top, top front piece is installed, the last piece that needs to go on is the top lid. And I ran it through the table saw and put that same bevel on it as I did with the top, top front. So they both have the same bevel. And then I just set it in there. It's not fastened yet. So the next thing we're gonna do while it's just sitting there is we're gonna add the hinges to it. Once the hinges are on the top lid, the next thing we're gonna work on is the frames that go around the whole carcass. Okay, so this will add another look to it and hide all of our screws. So I'll show you how I made those. So it'll start off with all the middle pieces. They're called rails. Um, the side pieces are called styles. So we'll start with all the rails and we are going to do pocket holes in all of them. Four holes for each one. Drill them, then flip them around, drill them. And we'll do that same thing for all of them. Once we have all the holes drilled, then it's time for assembly and I glue every joint and screw them. Some people just screw them together. I like to uh, have them glued as well as screwed. When you're screwing these together, uh, you don't have to clamp both the pieces. You only need to clamp the one that's being screwed into, not the one that the screws are going through. If you try to clamp both pieces, sometimes the pieces won't uh, turn out real flush, just because the difference in thickness of the materials, even though they should be the same, the screws actually pull it tighter to the front of that one piece. Once it's all together, we're gonna sand it, and after it is done being sanded, we are going to stain the whole thing. 
I'm only staining uh, the frames and trim pieces of the lectern. The carcass itself, I will leave uh, natural. After all the frames are stained and put around the lectern, we're gonna wanna cut some trim pieces for the top. And so what I did was I took a board and rounded over all four corners and then ripped them in half. Then I'm gonna take those trim boards and install them on the top portion of the lectern. So this does take a little bit of time uh, setting them on there, marking the angles, getting the angles perfect. So here I am just putting in the last uh, trim piece and using that angle gauge uh, again on both the angles really helps you get some nice tight fitting miter joints. Then we're gonna go back to the table saw and cut some real thin strips, about 16th of an inch. And these we are gonna to use to cover the screws around the top portion of the lectern. And using this little uh, rip gauge is really nice. All I have to do is just move the fence over to the ball bearing on the rip gauge. And I get the same size rips every time. And I'm not trying to rip small pieces on the right side in between the fence and the saw blade. So once you have those cut, just stain them up and then just start installing them on the top piece. Now I am gluing them with uh, some glue that actually is clear once it dries, just in case I have any squeeze out. And then I'm just gonna pin it with a 23 gauge pin nail. Uh, the nails on those are extremely small, so they're really hard to see, making them perfect for these really thin little things. Plus, it's not likely to split uh, this real thin stock. So I'm just going around the whole perimeter of each side and then putting them wherever there are screws. And basically, I just followed uh, the wood on the other side of the top. So if I could see through the top side, the wood that's there, that's where I put my trim pieces. The next piece we wanna make is a trim piece for the top lid. So I'm just gonna take a notch out of it on the table saw, stain it up, and install it to the lid with just some glue and nails. Then I'm gonna cut uh, four pieces for the bottom and I'm gonna round over one corner. Once I have the pieces cut, I am going to stain them up and then glue and nail them on. Now I am careful to leave them off the floor a little bit because I want this, I want the wheels to still hit the floor, that way it can roll around. And other than some sanding and a spray and coat of polyurethane, this is the finished product. You can see how it glides nicely on the floor, yet just a barely a gap on the bottom. So you can't see the wheels. That's it for today's project. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe and feel free to check out some of my other videos. If you have a project in mind, leave it in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I like that.